I said. So we've got all these clues, and we've got this rather convoluted, complicated yeah. set of explanations. Is there a more elegant, simple way of explaining all these things rather than this long list of it goes backwards on Thursdays type rules? <laughs> Unless it's bin day and then it has to go forward. Uh, maybe if we look to Jupiter, right? Because Jupiter with Galileo noticed that there's at least four distinct satellites, Galilean moons, as you said, we'll talk a lot about these soon, that go around it, not the Earth. So could the, these planets, these wanderers, not actually go around the Earth? What if they went around something else? Yeah, and so this was the idea that Copernicus came up with in the 1600s. Also blasphemous, but that's a different yes, story. They got, into, they got into trouble with it. But the basic idea was that maybe things go around the sun. I mean, the sun is clearly different than yes. everything else. And everyone it's, agreed that everyone knew the sun was different from the planets. So maybe we, the stars still form a big sphere, and maybe now this big sphere is going around the sun rather than the Earth, and they're, yep. they're way further out. But maybe everything else is going around the sun. So... To make this all work, here was the basic idea. You have the Sun in the middle, yep. and Mercury and Venus, the ones that sometimes show this crescent shape and stay close to the Sun, are going in circles around the Sun, close in the Earth. We are also going around the Sun. Yep. That's why the Sun appears to move across the stars. It's not just our view of it is changing. Yes. As we go around, we see it projected against different stars as we go around. Okay. And that Mercury is the closest and Venus the second closest. And this is why Mercury really doesn't go very far and it does these really quick oscillations. Venus, similar, but a lot slower, a lot less. And then Mars, Jupiter and Saturn are further out. They're also going around the Sun in circles, but these are now going further out in circles. And so they can be far away from the Sun or from Earth, they can be near the Sun. Yes, yeah, so if the Earth's on one side and Jupiter's on the other, it'll look it's the far, near the Sun. If, yep. if, um, You've got the Sun and Earth and then Jupiter down there, then it's far away right. from the Sun and the sky. But it's also always going to look full because You're always having we're near the light source. Exactly. Seeing, whereas Venus, when it's on the near side of the Sun to us, it's being lit up from the other side by the Sun, and so yep. we only see the crescent. So this explains quite a few of the clues, right? This would That's solve right. quite a few of those clues. It does clues. get a lot. We have to have everything going around the Sun rather than the Earth, which some people thought was a pretty big ask. But it does explain the crescent shape and why some planets show it and some doesn't. Yep. It explains why you get Venus and Mercury always close to the Sun, whereas Mars and Jupiter can be anywhere. What about the backwards and forwards? Because we saw Mars and Jupiter sometimes go backwards and forwards. Well, the first thing to explain is why they're all on the same plane. Yes. And we get that by saying that these things are going in circles, but all the circles are in the same plane. So if I got the Sun here, they're all going around like that. They're not going over the top or down the bottom. So this is the, like a face-on view of this, our solar okay. system. If you look at an edge-on view, it looks something like this. And this is actually a real map of the actual positions of the solar system. And they see they're extremely flattened. And so this is kind of those train tracks we were talking about earlier, that they're for the most part following that same circle, that same position in yep. our movement of so the sky. So that explains this line around yep. the sky, the ecliptic. So everything's in the same plane. So if we have this pattern, that everything's going in circles around the Sun, yep. in the same plane, and Mercury and Venus are close in, and Mars, Jupiter and Saturn... Further out. And Uranus and Neptune are further out. Yeah. Um, Uranus and Neptune, that's a different problem, though. And the things that are closer in are going fastest, yep. and as they go further out, they're, they're going, going slower, slower and yep. slower, and the Earth's in the middle somewhere. So can this also explain the backward motion? So what I've done here is here's a simulation of the planets going around. Okay. And I've grossly exaggerated the size of the planets in the simulation. Okay. So you can see them. If I put them to scale, they'd just be dots and you wouldn't see anything. But now let's look at this whole thing from the point of view of the Earth looking towards the Sun. Okay, so we're on the Earth here yep. and then we're looking at the Sun. Yep. And so you can first of all see the Sun appears to be moving against the background stars. Yep. It's actually not. We're just looking at it from a different point of view. But now you can see... Uh, Mercury and Venus going around it and sometimes they'll pass behind the Sun and sometimes mm. they'll pass before because they're doing circles around it. That's right. And you can see that when they're on the near side they look like a crescent. That's right, so when they're kind of here we start to see as a crescent yep. and then we start to lose it. Yes, so this very naturally explains why the Sun moves across the sky at a steady rate against the stars and that Venus and Mercury are sometimes in front of it and sometimes behind it. But they're still always close to it. And sometimes move closer and further away and also explains why they have the crescent shape from that's time right. to time. That's so that's easy. pretty good. We've explained yeah. a whole bunch of things with just 
one basic thing. <laughs> it's I think it's bad. a Mark Twain quote. The thing he likes about science is you get such a wholesale return on conjecture from such a trifling investment of fact. <laughs> but here we've got basically a very simple idea. Things go right. in circles around the sun. And it's explaining a lot of different things that otherwise you'd have these really complicated oh. rules for. But now let's look at Mars. So now I'm on the Earth looking towards Mars. Okay. And what you're going to see is it's sort of going behind the sun. Yep. And, it's, and now it's going forward compared to the stars, but at a slower rate than the sun. Yep. But as uh, it gets, gets closer to us, we're now catching up with it. And we'll actually start seeing that as we overtake it, it's now on the opposite side of the side of the sun. It now appears to move backwards as we race past it. And that's because we're closer to the sun, so we're moving faster than it. Yeah, it's a bit like you, know, you overtake a car on the freeway. It appears to be moving backwards. That's right. It's not really. It's just you're moving faster than it. So this could explain now the backwards motion that we saw of Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn as well. That's right. And it also explains why they only happen when the sun's over there and these things are the opposite side, because that's when we're busy overtaking that's right. these things. So this is actually doing really rather well. It's actually explaining a whole bunch of stuff. It explains why they all go on the same track across the sky, why the sky the sun goes at a steady rate, but explains why the planets don't go at a steady rate and why they sometimes turn backwards. Um, so it's... Uh, like a pretty good theory. What do you reckon? I say it's actually not too bad. So here's another explanation of this yep. backwards motion. The basic idea is that as the Earth goes forward, we're seeing Mars or Jupiter or Saturn projected against different stars. And as we overtake it, we see it apparently yep. have this so-called retrograde motion moving backwards. And, and look, this is really hard to figure out, right? You know, you have to figure out that you have to observe it at the right time of year, the right position. You know, you need the right everything to make sure you note these observations and you can kind of understand why it's been hard to arrive at this answer because it is pretty complicated to get the motions of planets. Yeah and you have to be able to assume that the earth can move and the earth is a sphere. I mean by the 1600s they knew the earth was a sphere I and mean, Magellan and Drake had been yes. around the world before then um, and that would have been well known to at least educated people since antiquity. Um, but then the idea that everything went around the sun, you need to have a rule that things can go around other things. Which, That's right. And that was kind of why seeing the moons go around Jupiter was such a gobsmacking thing for Galileo to spot.